It's time for some straight talk. The big wireless companies charge a boatload for their superior network coverage. But guess what? Straight talk uses the same cell towers but charges a lot less. Who knew? Well, now you do. And I do. So let's do something. It's time to switch to straight talk. Unlimited plans start as low as 35 bucks a month on America's largest, most dependable networks. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Savings may vary. A month equals 30 days. Please refer always to the latest terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. I saw that in one of the interviews that you did, you yeah. said the only thing you that demanded was for the last show well, was you know, cake. Everybody was talking about the end of the show. You know, and I, we, we were asked about this a long time ago. It seems like the end was coming, I guess, for a long time. That do you want what kind of celebration you want? I said, I don't want anything. I just want a cake. Just a cake. But that didn't make it any different from any other day. You always wanted a cake. It's, exa- it's, kind, of the, it's kind of the show. Just, let's just keep it the same. And, and what I don't really understand is why we had so many cakeless mornings. I mean, there were a lot of I days agree. where there were events. Should have been cake. That it felt like were cake-worthy. Absolutely should have been cake, and there were not. You know, like, 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 like what's cake-worthy to you? I, I guess to you, everything is cake-worthy. What day is it? A- any day of the week. that Days you that end in Y, it's cake-worthy. Yeah, Golik would like a cake every Today, we have a cake. Even you. It's a big cake. I know the whole Golik family is coming. I'm not sure we'll finish that cake. Part of the cake is chocolate, and the other part is, like, the, the, white, the white cake and chocolate cake, and I'm a chocolate guy. We don't know which is which, so I'll be digging into both sides of that. We are certainly covering the sports news of the yep. day for you today, and we'll get back to that in a minute. But we'll give you a few more facts here again, because mm-hmm. Hembo did a nice job researching some of the facts and figures um, <clears throat> dating back to when we first launched right. uh, what was going on in the world. And, again, this was the number one song. That's smooth by Santana, and that is a smooth song. And by the way, we're talking about, for those that may not know, we're talking about January of 2000. Yep. That's when this show started, to which time Dan Marino was the all-time leader in passing touchdowns. He's now fifth. You know, see someone else who's had a better run than we have in 18 years? Jerry Jones. Yes, he has. Whatever winds up happening now. Mm-hmm. When we started Mike and Mike, the Cowboys were valued at $713 million. They're now worth $4.8 billion. Billion. That's with a B. It's impressive. Mark Zuckerberg is still worth more. Again, that, that right now is my that favorite one. one. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg was 15 years old when we started. He's now the fifth richest person in the world. We, um, if, 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 if I was the fifth richest person in the world, Zuckerberg would be a place. It would be a location. Yeah, that is very true. I would have bought, like, Berg is, as, because my name ends in Berg also, so I know this. Berg is mountain. So I'd have bought a mountain. I think. In Aspen, and I'd have built a golf course on it. Two of the, the great sports ones to me over time is Tiger Woods had won only two majors, and Phil Mickelson had yet to win one yeah. when we started the show. They've I remember come- Mickelson won the, the, the Masters. I don't ask me why I remember this, but we were flying to Chicago for like an opening day thing at Wrigley Field on that Monday when Mickelson won his first right. major on right. that Sunday and jumped all of four inches off the ground. Yeah, he did. That was, a, that was a horrible leap. So there were only two between them that when we started. Now they've combined for 17. And the most incredible one, I think, is Roger Federer and the Williams sisters had combined, combined for one major. They now, between the three of them, have 48. I mean... That is ridiculous. So this has now become a list of people who've had better 18-year runs. I was going to say, is this supposed to make, uh, make us go wow or, oh, my God, we're losers? Can, can we have a list of all the things that failed in the last 18 years? How about people that didn't do so well? Is, how about people that didn't make it 18 years? My Where's alarm that? has been set for 3.45 a.m. every day for 18 years. Where, they need something to make where, me feel better. Where do we better ourselves? Yeah, Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance. Guest this morning again, Buster in this hour, Bill Curry today, Frank Caliendo, and more on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Steelers over the Titans last night in a very impressive performance. And in what has been, you know, it's weird to think about it because if you just close your eyes, if you have followed it closely and, and say, how would you characterize the Steelers' season so far? You'd say uneven. You'd say a little uncharacteristically noisy and controversial. They've at times looked a little bit disinterested. They're 8-2. and two. Listen, the one, eight and two. the one thing with this offense that we can say about them that would make you go, Really? This is they're eight and two. That's ten games by my math into the season. This is the first game they scored over thirty points. Mm-hmm. This high powered offense, it's the first time they scored over thirty points. They didn't even run well last night. Le'Veon Bell didn't have many yards as a team. They only averaged about three yards per carry, but it was Antonio Brown doing his thing, Ben doing his thing, throwing the ball 45 times. And the biggest difference to me, and one of the reasons that they are right in the mix for that run and a Super Bowl, is that defense. And by the way, that defense is somewhat young, some of the, the, the major parts of that. They don't have a lot of years on them. So they are looking really, really good right now. That old line for the first time in a long time had all five of their starters last night. So 
as we've always said, it's not where you start unless you dig yourself a hole too big to get out of, but it's where you finish. And you're right. They're sitting there at 8-2, and two, and I don't think we had a great handle on them. But they are really, really rounding into shape at the right time. And if there's one thing that I've learned over the many years of doing this show, it is that with the NFL, until you get to around Thanksgiving, you really don't know what you have. Like one question you almost always, Mike, I've noticed, I like to ask coaches and managers is, at what point in a season do you feel like you know what you've right. got? And, and they answer however it is they answer. But if you just sort of look back at, at, at where teams have been around Thanksgiving time is when the good teams start looking like the good teams. Maybe that will be Pittsburgh now. And, and the other side of that, I'll just say, because so much talk about Philadelphia sitting there with one loss and the best team in the NFL, you start breaking them down a little bit. I think there are people that are, aren't as sold as others. You know, look look at who they've beaten. They're one and one against teams with a better than five hundred record. All the other teams they've beaten were under five hundred. Carson Wentz has already been hit sixty three times. That's twenty one more times than at this point last year. So, and the schedule, obviously, you know, well, they're they're playing uh, um, Dallas Dallas week, Sunday night. Chicago has a tough defense, and they go to Seattle. They play the Rams. Then they have the Giants, Oakland, and Dallas again. So they're getting into a tough part of their schedule. Wentz has been getting hit some. We talked about that offensive line. That offensive line has been playing well, but Peters is out at left tackle now. They've been running the ball well and throwing well, but he does take some hits. So that one, I think when you kind of dig down a little bit, you're like, okay, even though they only have one loss, I think there's a lot of people that feel they need, they still have some proving to do as well against the better teams. Yeah. I mean, I suppose that's true. They've, you know, who they've, I know you would say this too. They've beaten the teams on their schedule. Exactly right. They, they don't make the schedule. They've played the schedule. We'll see on Sunday night. They can bury the division Good one on at, Sunday at night. At Dallas, again, no Zeke in this one at Dallas, so no Sean Lee. Did you see the set on Sean Lee? Yeah, he's he's like uh, I think it was Romo when he was doing their game was saying when Sean, that he's the most important when defensive player in the league. Sean Lee, the linebacker for the Cowboys, when he is on the field, opponents average eighty yards rushing. When he is off the field, opponents average one hundred and sixty yards rushing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it, it, most important defensive player in the league might have been a bit of an exaggeration yeah. by a guy talking about his right, former right. teammate, but the numbers he's are big. the numbers. Tackling machine. Um, and, but the Cowboys are playing, you know, for the all intents and purposes, the rest of the season without Zeke Elliott. They're right. not going to catch Philly no matter what happens. But in, in my opinion, but when you look at the 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 conference as a whole, if you're looking for a team that maybe you you you, you, you tread water until you get Ezekiel Elliott back. You sneak in as a wild card. He's fresh. A team that maybe could surprise somebody in the playoffs. Maybe you have an eye on Dallas. Yeah, right now. But I think they're going to have a tough time getting in. Two other teams that aren't leading their division both have three losses are Carolina and Seattle as you look at wild cards. And then Dallas has four. Detroit, Green Bay has four. Minnesota. Atlanta has four. Yeah, yeah. So the the loser of the race between Detroit and Minnesota will be in a very good spot for a wild card. The loser of the race between Carolina and New Orleans will be in a very good spot. You can't count out uh, Atlanta and you can't count out. uh, Let's even call it the loser of the race between. Between Seattle and the Rams, so I mean that a playoff spot is not easy to come by. Back after the season, man, it's fun in the NFC. So we'll see. That's sort of where we stand. Let's do one last five point stand right now. Mike and Mike, Kick up. let's go. It's time for the five point stance. All right, one last time we mm-hmm. do a five point stance. Take you around the National Football League as we look ahead to a very interesting NFL weekend. <laughs> At number five, it's the Patriots and the Raiders in the third ever regular season game in Mexico City. Now, when you looked at the schedule before the season started, you would have thought, oh, here could be a showdown between yep. the top two teams. Has it worked out that way for Oakland? No, Oakland, it just hasn't lived up. That old line, we talked about the two top old lines, Dallas and Oakland, coming into the year, and they both struggled early on. Oakland still struggling a bit. We saw Dallas struggling without Tyron Smith at left tackle, giving up the uh, the eight sacks, six to one player. So, yeah, there has been a struggle there. Uh, they're Playing at a stadium that's even higher than than uh, than mile high in Denver, twenty three hundred feet higher. Higher, and let me tell you, that's real. When I would go play at Denver, your lungs burn. You feel it, you know, and you, and you try and work through that. There's that initial burn, that initial lightheadedness, that initial tired, where you're like, oh my god, how am I how am I going to play? And you end up obviously being able to do it. But uh, you're right. This game, I think, had a lot more on it when the schedule was made at the beginning when we were looking at the beginning of the season. Let's say that again. This stadium is twenty three hundred feet higher yeah. than Denver. Right. 
Uh, so that it's a factor in the game. Oh, without question. And without having any idea. Now, neither how, one of these teams are Denver, so they're both right. teams that aren't used to it. Correct. So I was about to say, without having any idea what they'll do, you just know Belichick will get that right. <laughs> you yeah. just know Belichick. He'll somehow figure that out right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Oakland played there last year, by the way, and beat Houston in that game, so they know how to deal <laughs> with it as well. Uh, number four in our five-point stance, the Saints. And we had their coach, Sean Payton, on yesterday, have won seven straight following their O and two start. I'll say it again. They've r- passed the ball 300 times and run it, I believe, 276 times. The last time they had a split like this was when they won the Super Bowl. This is a team where you know you can rely on Drew Brees to pass the ball. But between Ingram and Kamara, what they're getting out of the backfield, that old line getting solidified up, getting Armstead back, as I mentioned, at, at left tackle. Uh, Unger's been the, the main guy at center, obviously. Pete, the, uh, they've been moving all around the line. You can keep him at guard. They, they have really kind of kind of taken control up front because you see a lot of those runs, a lot of yardage has been up the gut. Uh, and it's worked out pretty well for them. But, again, their defense. And Sean Payton was on the show listing the draft picks that are starting, the rookies that are starting, and then the guys that you bring in. And that's after losing one of those guys, one of those linebackers early on uh, this year. So it's we, t- we kind of talked about that with the Giants two years ago. Between draft picks and free agents, they, we were like, wow, that fit together really, really well. That's exactly what's happening in New Orleans right now. Again, they've won seven straight after starting 0-2. There's only one team in history to win eight straight after starting 0-2, and, and that happened in 1947. It was the Bears. New Orleans plays home to um, the to Washington this week. Then they've got the Rams, and then they've got the Panthers. So it'll be very interesting to see what winds up happening with them as they go forward. Uh, next in our five-point stance, Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz will have 33 combined wins entering their game uh, again to the two teams this weekend, Eagles and Cowboys. Most combined wins by quarterbacks entering a meeting within yeah. their first two seasons in the Super Bowl era. They, they've just both been terrific. They have been terrific, and, and you know you can break down numbers. I just told you hits that Wentz has taken, but also obviously how well He's throwing the ball. He is without question right there as the midway point MVP of the league. Dak, we were wondering what he was going to do after last year, what kind of performance, and he's going to be asked to even do more now that Zeke's out of the lineup. That old line starting to play better as well, and I think the defense, they're rushing the passer better as well. But the bottom line is, when you say Dallas Cowboys and say Philadelphia Eagles right now, you know what you say? They are set at quarterback for the next decade. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, and, and not many teams can say that. And they can say it with confidence and say it with not only are we set there, but we have guys that we can win with there. And you look back at that draft class, Goff went one, Wentz went two, Prescott obviously went much later in the draft, but you put them all in the same class. Right. And, and you got to go back, I think, to Eli and Ben and Rivers yep. the last time we had a group that looks this good. Now, it's much too early. Much too early, but listen, early returns are, are pretty darn good. Five points stands with Mike and Mike. The four <laughs> NFC division leaders are all at 7-2 and two or better. According to Elias, since the league went to four divisions back in 2002, the only other time all four conference division leaders had a better winning percentage was back in 2004. So right now, the, the, the best teams in the league are separating themselves more than they have recently from the lesser teams in the league, which I think makes it... In some ways, people say there are no great teams. Well, there are some very good ones, and we'll see now. The battle is going to be for home field advantage and yeah, all that kind it of is. stuff down this stretch. But the biggest separation, obviously, is the Eagles and the Cowboys, 8-1 and one to 5-4, and four, and the Eagles can really stretch that out if they win in Dallas. Uh, coming up on Sunday, the Vikings have a two-game over Detroit and Green Bay, 7-2 and two to 2-5-4s. Two, and fours. We'll see where that one goes, because even though Case Keenum is playing well, that's still a question mark for them. We know, obviously, the question mark in Green Bay uh, as well at the quarterback position. That's I know you like the Lions still coming that division. I like Minnesota because of the defense. And then that NFC South, Carolina sitting at 7-3 and really starting to look more like that team from two years ago than last year. And the Atlanta Falcons, we kept saying, what's their identity? What's their identity? Well, we saw some great pass rush out of them, really taking advantage of a weakness for the Cowboys. Uh, and, and is that offense going to start putting up points like they did last year? They're sitting just, you know, they're sitting at five and four. And the Rams and the Seahawks, you know, that's going to be the battle out there in the West. Uh, I, I just, the, the two teams that I'm, you know, happy for is a relative term, but that I like seeing what I'm seeing out of them is the Rams and the Saints. The Saints, just because the Saints, it's like, well, you know, Drew Brees is going to throw for a million yards, but they can't run the ball. They can't play defense. Now they can, and they are. And the Rams, I mean, they just been it's been horrible for so long and especially with golf 
you know, everybody just wanting to kick him to the curb after just a few games his rookie year and how well that's going now. And then finally, in our five-point stance, the Seahawks have won 11 straight games on Monday Night Football. That's the second longest winning streak in the history of that series, and they have a huge showdown game this Monday night with Atlanta, two teams that are going to be fighting to get into the playoffs, at least as it stands right now. I think all of us still believe in Seattle. Not sure exactly whether we believe in Atlanta or not. Either way, it's a big game Monday night. Yeah, it's a monster game Monday night. It's a team in Seattle who, while they're a game behind the Los Angeles Rams, they, are, they have a win in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, with not a great home field advantage. We know that. But still, it was at their home. Then, So the next time they get them, uh, it's going to be in Seattle. Uh, and that is going to be uh, December 17th. So that, that's a big win on the road for them being one game behind the Rams. But a monster game here. I think really this is going to be a nice test on where we see Atlanta. Do we buy into what we saw? And now a defense in Seattle who last year we had to deal with a lot without Earl Thomas when he got hurt. Now you're dealing without Richard Sherman. And that is our five-point stance, which is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit them at geico.com or call one 800 9 Four seven auto. I look up and how nice is this, Mike? Hashtag MM say thanks is right now the number one trending topic in the United States. Oh, that is nice. That's very nice. And I want to make it very clear. And Megan is in here and she and her team did a lot of work putting oh, this so together. Much. Megan Judge yep. um, and all of our team uh, led by Ray Necci and everybody else involved put together so much effort into making these last couple of weeks really terrific. Um, but the MM say thanks is from us. I want to make that clear. I know a lot of people are, I can see that a lot of people are interpreting the hashtag as a way to say thank you to us, and we certainly appreciate that. Yes, we do. But that's us no, that's saying us. thank you. Thank you to you. Um, that's exactly we, right. We are, let's put it this way, whatever it is we put into this thing, we've gotten a lot more out yeah, of it. we have. A, a thousand times more out of it than we ever put Listen, in. Listen, w- w- there's no way we've been here for 18 years if, if you, you all weren't listening and watching. I mean, that's just a fact. I mean, that's, that's how this thing works. You put something on radio and TV, if people listen and watch, it stays on. If it doesn't, if they don't, then it goes away. So we were able to hang on for uh, for 18 years. So that that means that uh, a lot of you stuck with us, and and we really do appreciate that. Yeah, and and especially in our case because we started with no fanfare, no, no promotion or anything like that. So it really was a grassroots movement. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We were a grassroots movement. Those of you who were with us from the very beginning, and we were only on the radio when we started for the first four years of our show. And even when we first went on TV, that was a minuscule part yep. of what we were doing. Um, we we were a, a grassroots movement. We were some. We were a show that some people started listening to, some people liked, and they just sort of told their friends, and it grew from there. And and that that is the God's honest yeah. truth of how this got to be whatever it is it is now. Imagine starting a job somewhere, and for the first four years of it, your boss had no idea what you were doing. That's true. You you had a job. You weren't going to lose your job, but they had no clue. What you were doing. And then when they finally looked at you, they were like, oh, the ratings are pretty good. You know, and then, and then it goes from there. But that, that's kind of where we were. We got to, we got to work through a lot of kinks in this show because they really weren't listening. And, and we're not saying they weren't listening because they didn't want to listen. They weren't listening because they couldn't listen. We weren't on here. <laughs> we weren't on locally here in Connecticut for them to listen. Now, I say that maybe if we were on, they may have chosen not to listen anyway. That could be true as well. But it is true. They, they could not hear our show for the first three, four years of this show to let us work through a lot of things. Sitting in that little booth, yeah. the two of us, again, I, I, I would have, if that still existed, I would have said we should have gone back there and done the last show for yeah, me. Yeah, but it doesn't exist, right. that booth is in a building that has been remodeled like eight times yeah. since we've done it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I mean, look, when I started here, I was, as I was walking in the building today, I was thinking, I started at ESPN. What, wait, when did you start? I started in August of 96. I, I, I moved here physically in 98, but I started working here right when I retired. Uh, I tried, retired in 94, so 95, I started working for the company. So you'll remember it, too. I mean, when I, forgetting just the Mike and Mike piece of this, but just the growth of the company. When I started here, my desk was in a trailer that was outside in the parking lot. And because there were two buildings, there's this now. I don't even know how many. There. I think there's fourteen. Fourteen. We have a fourteen. It's, it's a campus. You have to take a, like a, a yeah. little van to go you from around, one part yeah. of it to another. But when we started, there were two buildings, and they were building the third. And my, I started out as an anchor on ESPN News, and so I came in my first day, and they gave me this little desk and a little cubicle in this trailer because there was construction going on. And in that trailer with me were Dan Patrick, Keith Olbermann. Charlie Steiner, Bob Lee, Robin Roberts, Chris Berman. 
And I'm looking around like, you got to be kidding me. I'm you know, 29 years old, and I'm looking around the room at these legends, um, Stuart Scott, Rich Eisen, th- those people who you know made uh, everything happen at that yeah. time. And then I-, I started out, and I-, I didn't know where I would find my way in here. And then I got ridiculously lucky. I mean, the God's honest truth is I got ridiculously lucky. Um, because you needed a partner, and they knew I had done some radio in Chicago, so they sent me in here to do a couple of days just to sort of keep the thing afloat, and the next thing I knew, here we are. So two questions. You were in a trailer with all those people. Yes. How many bathrooms were in there? You know, I honestly don't remember. I I, I honestly think that they were like porta-potties set yeah. up around the campus. So that's one. The other question is, you had a desk? Yeah, we had a desk. I had. A, there was I didn't a, have a desk. Y- you didn't have a desk? No. We, at what point I had did you nothing. Get a desk? I had nothing, and then I got a cubicle, which I laid down and put my head on the trash can for my pillow when I was here all day doing stuff. Well, my favorite, one of my favorite things was when I got an office and you didn't have yeah, one. Yeah, I didn't have an office. I had an office, and Golik didn't have an office, and mm-hmm. um, those were funny. I think that stuff is in the book now. i got to go back and look at it, our, our book that we did now eight years ago. Anyway, it's, I, I just looked at it. That's down. right. We wrote a book. A book works perfectly in the bathroom because you don't. There's no real end beginning. You don't. You can just pick it up and read stories. Yeah, you know I don't endorse about? that, but I, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Okay. I'm not in favor of it. Um, what but the I, book or, or the book in the bathroom? I'm, I'm not in favor of the bathroom piece. Of We've it. had this talk a lot. You don't, not even the phone. You don't take a phone in the bathroom. No, Nothing. Most, most when, when you go in the bathroom, you leave everything else out. It's just you in the bathroom. No magazine. No iPad. No phone. No book. No nothing. Got to focus. I Are mean, you that, kidding that's, me? That's a place for taking care of business and getting out. That's I got not a, a place I'm planning to spend a any additional library time. in there. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a library. <laughs> the only library you've ever been in in your entire life. You certainly never saw the one in Notre Dame. <laughs> I'll tell hey. you that much. Okay, Mike and Mike, yeah. uh, again, it, I mean, again, <laughs> MM Say Thanks is the number one trending topic in the U.S. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Um, we have a lot of people to thank, uh, and one of them is one of our most frequent yes. guests and who has been one of the – he has been both behind the scenes and in front of them, one of the great supporters of our Absolutely show over right. all of our years, and he will join us next. Hey, everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. All right, again, hashtag MM Say Thanks continues to be the number one trending topic in the U.S. That's really very nice. With all the stuff going on in the world, um, the people have taken a, a couple of minutes yeah. out of their day at least to tweet something at us, nice messages, and I, I'm sure you will too, Mike. I'm, I, I will find some time to oh, kind of just been, go through I've as many of them as I can. I've been doing it as, as I can, answering some here and there, and, and we'll continue to do that. Um, yeah, yes, I mean, it, it, to, to read, it, it, it just amazes me, obviously, all the people – that have watched and listened, but hearing the stories, hearing the, my daughter was two, now she's, you know, a sophomore in college, you know, I mean, I was in middle school, now I'm married. I mean, all that, it's just unreal hearing some of the stories of, of the time lapse of this. And the really, I'm not going to suggest they're not all meaningful. They're all meaningful. But there are so many people that have sent notes that said that when I was, I'm just, this is just one example. I'm with my dad when he was having cancer treatments yep. and we would sit and we'd listen to you guys and it would make him feel better and it makes me think of him now. And again, all of the members of the armed okay, service yes. who were stationed overseas and have told us, because we used to be on the Armed Forces Radio Network yep. for many years, yep. that they'd listen to us talking about sports and mm-hmm. it would make them feel closer to home. Those, those I mean, you know. Those are the say? ones. I, I completely agree with you. And there's so many and we'll, we'll relive a lot of those and. And how many times they've tuned in, either listening or watching, and you know, hearing Buster only talk about milking a cow or something from his dairy farm growing That's up. That's exactly right. <laughs> Robert Stanberry, only the third, and that there were a few people. And 
We couldn't get everybody on this week that we wanted to yeah. to say thank you, but we could not let the week go by without putting Buster on because um, in, in every way, both in front of the cameras, uh, in ways that you saw when he would come on the show a million times, hosted the show a million yes, times, yes, he did. but also behind the scenes because Buster gets up so early. How many emails? Oh, my gosh. So many emails. He, he does as much show prep for us as anybody else. He does, and he's been a great friend over the years, so we wanted to take a moment to say thank you, Robert Stanberry Olney III. That's really cool, uh, and I'm so honored you asked me to uh, to be on today. And, and I actually was going to apologize for all the emails. More, you know, the more that I thought about it, I'm like, oh my god, I I probably was the one who created the spam box at ESPN because <laughs> of the emails that I would send you guys. And and last night I did a hot stove event in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and I laughed because I had the same experience that I've had uh, a million times over. Uh, since I started ESPN, a super nice woman came up to me uh, and said, look, I didn't know anything about you, I, you know, I, but I got to know you a little bit uh, when you were on Mike and Mike, and, and that's how I you know, saw you. And then she paused and she said, I have one question to ask. Will ESPN be able to go on without Mike and Mike? <laughs> and uh, that obviously says a lot about you guys. Thank you. I think they'll be just fine. Now, <laughs> in the interest of, of telling old stories oh, today, boy. Yeah. I, I believe one last time on this yeah. show, we need to hear the story of Daniel Boone. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Okay, so I was six years old, and my first pet was a steer named Daniel Boone, a black Angus steer. Uh, and I, was, I knew that uh, Daniel Boone at some point was going to become the family hamburger. Uh, but I hadn't really experienced it. Then one day I went off to my friend Jimmy Davenport's in Woodstock, Vermont, for a, uh, a play date, and I came back, uh, and there were Daniel Boone's four stomach chambers on our backyard. And, and that was the uh, demise of, of my first pet, Daniel Boone, and that was my indoctrination into life uh, on a farm. Uh, and, and Greeny, I remember your expression when I told that story uh, I think you went into therapy. Well, you probably doubled your sessions in therapy after I told that story the first time because you still couldn't believe that's what happened to first family pet. Can you imagine that no, being your I first mean, pet? In all honesty, in all honesty, <laughs> did it affect you? I mean, I know you, you, you're on that farm. You, you knew that was going to happen, and you, you've seen it. So did it, did it affect you? No. Uh, to, to quote from that, uh, the classic movie, Babe, about the pig, that's the way things are. Uh, and that was the first, first sign of that. Believe me, I, uh, we, we enjoyed many family pets through my time growing up on the farm in Vermont. Yeah, that's one of the most disturbing sentences that has ever been spoken on the show in 18 years. <laughs> and, and can I just ask you an honest question, a serious question that I should have thought to ask you then? Do they not have a dog on, on, a, on a, a, a dairy farm? Could you have not had a cat? Were there, were, were there no options of pets that were not meant you mean to be eating, eating a dog or a cat? No, or no, just, no. Okay. His right. first pet is a steer. Could they have not gotten you like a little kitty cat? You know, you could. You know, you were Buster. You could have had a little, you know, cat. And you could have. I mean, was that not an option? No, we, you know, I probably had 20 dogs uh, through the years, probably had 40 cats, plus all the, you know, the feral cats that lived in the barn. But uh, like a lot of kids who grow up on farms, you know, you're, you're given a, a, you know, a pet, a, a calf, a bull, uh, you know, a young cow, that sort of thing. You show them at the 4-H shows. Uh, and so I, I got Daniel Boone. I bought, I think I, my purchase price for him was 10 bucks from a local neighbor. And that's what we knew was going to happen with Daniel Boone. And when he turned two years old and he got two and he was really big and, and that, uh, that was the end. It's just amazing that he says it like it's the most normal thing that at some point in my life, I know I'm going to be presented a steer, you know, as a pet. It, it's, I, it, I, and the other thing that I remember about that story, by the way, is that it was the day that I learned the different delineations of a cow, right? So there's a, there's a steer. <laughs> yeah. A steer and a bull are separated by what again? What's the difference between a bull and a steer? Uh, the, uh, the elimination of the testicles. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry I asked that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, there could have been a different way of putting that, I have to believe. Is there? Really? I one of them is was there, the, is there one, a, what's the female me? one called? That that is the scientific definition of the difference between the two. You asked the question. No, what's right? a female one? What is a female this? cow called? A cow. A cow. Oh, the a cow, cow. Is, is by definition female. So a steer is a not cow, a male cow. And then you have a steer, and and then you have a steer, and then you have a bull. Right. Yeah. Oh, a cow. I, I, I thought a woman. you learned all this back before I mean, you melted. Seriously. Stock. 
I, I, you know, this is stuff that I probably should have learned before I milked one of the two cows that I milked over the years. Oh but Buster was a huge help God. to that. Buster was in here doing like a little milking prep for me when I yeah uh, yeah when, when I you when milk. you milked an ounce Legendary of milk out of that cow. cow. Yeah. Uh, and then and then one more quickly with Buster Golick, maybe your funniest line in 18 years of hosting oh. Mike and Mike came during the World Series when Tony Larusa went to the bullpen and got the wrong reliever. And it was, he said it was because he couldn't see over the outfield wall. Right. And Buster came on the next day and said, you know, it's <laughs> true because Tim Kirkshen and I went down and we stood on that dugout first step and we couldn't see over the wall. And yeah. Golick said. What did I say again? He couldn't, he couldn't he see over second base. Second base was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, uh, to this day, one of my favorite lines yeah, ever. Yeah, I didn't want to be mean again, but yeah, sorry. Sorry, Buster. No, you, you love that goal. Like, no, no, through the years, I, I understand. Like when I told you a month ago that in interviewing Jose Altuve after games that I loom over him, uh, your laughter at that line uh, <laughs> resonates with me and will forever. The definition of looming is something else. All right, well, one, <laughs> thing I, one thing I definitely want to ask baseball-related, because Greeny and I have had this debate for 18 years. You get Stanton that wins NL MVP, and he outdistanced Joey Votto by two points. It's the first time that the top two finishers in the MVP, MVP voting from either league had both had came from teams with losing records. And Greeny is always Greeny takes the definition of MVP to heart. I say it means it's the best player because, as he says, you know, you can be the worst team uh, and lose even more. And, and so why is that guy the MVP? How is he really helping you? I disagree with that. Where do you stand on that? I totally agree with you, uh, again, uh, because I think that, uh, look, you can't, uh, you, you can't hold a, a, you know, the, the competence of a team against one player. I think it purely comes down to uh, who is the best player in the league. And I think over time what we're seeing with the MVP voting, uh, you're seeing voters trend in that direction. Mike Trout winning last year despite the fact that the Angels weren't competitive. And now this year with Votto and Giancarlo Stanton uh, finishing 1-2 uh, in the MVP voting despite the fact that their teams didn't compete, I think that – Tells you where we're going with this direction. Sorry, Greeny, wrong again. Well, they just need to change. Then just change the name of the award because valuable. I mean, the, the first time we had this argument was when we were talking. With, uh, Arod won the MVP award on a team that finished last, and I thought, how valuable was he? You take him off the team, what were they going to finish? Worse than last? You're hung up on. You're hung up on title. I'm hung up on the word. I'm, forgive me for you to, for for actually reading what the name of the award says. Too literal. It's I, I said you're too player. literal. Well, I'll tell you what. So. So let me yeah. ask you this. I'll, I'll take a hypothetical. When uh, last year, when the Red Sox played the Angels uh, and Mookie Betts of the Red Sox was playing against Mike Trout and the Angels, was the game more valuable to Mookie Betts than it was to Mike Trout? It had more meaning. There was a, an infinitely more significance for the Red Sox and in their performance in those games in August and September than it does for teams that are hopelessly out of it. Look, if there's no reasonable contender to be found from a team that winds up winning something, you don't have to win everything, but be playing meaningful games in September. If you're not doing that, then I have a very difficult time giving a player the most valuable player award. I'm glad you don't vote on it then. I'll tell you what, though. Buster, you have been a most valuable yes, player for us over the years and a great friend, and that won't change. But we wanted to make sure we said thank you to you today. Thanks for everything. Thanks, guys. It really it means a lot to me that you had me on today. Thanks, Buster. Buster Olney on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. The eight is pet steer. Daniel Boone. Is that unbelievable? I mean, th that, that story, I'll never forget. He was hosting with me one day, one of those you know dog days of summer kind of shows. Yeah. In the middle of July, we're looking for something to talk about. And I just turned him and I was like, Buster, tell me about yourself. No one, yeah. you're, a, you're a man named Buster Olney. It's a very unusual name. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And he goes into this story about growing up. Your jaw up on had a, to drop on a, on on a dairy story. farm. I don't know. He said, I grew up on a Vermont dairy farm. Oh, I said, oh, how fascinating. Yeah. Tell me about yeah. that. And he tells me this story about how his first pet was a steer named Daniel Boone. And one day he came home and its four stomachs were scattered yeah. around the yard. So he's telling that and, and your, your, your jaw drops and then you're asking... The most ridiculous question of all time, what's a female cow called? Well, I, did, I thought a cow was the overriding definite. Like a horse is a horse, of course, of course. But a horse is a horse, and you have female horses and male horses, right? And, and, and they have different names, a mare and, a, and a something else, and, and whatever it is. And, and, and so I just thought that cow was a catch-all phrase yeah. for that entire species. It's not. And it's I not. had it wrong. Okay. Steer is a male animal that has been neutered. 
a mature male animal that is used for breeding is a bull. Okay. I, oh. Now I know. So, yeah. see, I, it took me 18 years, but I finally Tough road learned. for the steer, short sure. road for the bull. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. I woke up to you guys for many, many years. I especially remember the mornings when I was in the hospital or in my recliner at home taking my meds. You guys were a difference maker in the early hours, not just for me, but for many, many other people. You both had your perspective, which made it exciting and interesting for everybody to hear and to see. Thank you for making my mornings worth waking up for. I will miss the jabs that both of you took at each other, and when the show was over, both, I'm sure, walked away with an appreciation for each other. That's what made you guys the best. I'll miss it as well as the entire country. You both are blessed men. Love you guys. Take care. God bless. And I will see you down the road. Wow, that's fantastic. What a good guy he is. Oh, man. I'm, again, I met him on the football field my true freshman year at Notre Dame, his senior year at the U when they were spanking us that year. And then the next time I met him was four years later. I got drafted by the Houston Oilers. He was playing for the USFL Houston Gamblers mm-hmm. at that time, and uh, we certainly become great He's a great player, and, and, and now obviously the whole Kelly Tough and everything yep. else. He's just he's just as good as it gets. Go ahead. And, and by the way, uh, since I'm usually the one who attaches the read to everything, do you want to do that? And then I got, I'll give you a stat. I'll do it this time, yeah. Jim, unfortunately, is watching. He isn't going to like No, he's not. 30 for 30 podcasts are back. These are stories you just have to hear to believe. Subscribe right now in the Listen tab of the ESPN app or Apple podcast presented by Mini. How about this? The first episode of Mike and Mike. I love it when people call us episodes. Yeah, I know. Like we're a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> we came in here every year, 200 days a year for 18 years. But anyway, the first day we were on the air together was January 3rd of 2000. Mm-hmm. Five days later, the Bills lost to the Titans in a game that will forever be remembered for yeah. the Music City Miracle. Wow. They are the only team, the Buffalo Bills are the only team in the four major professional sports to have not played in a playoff game since. That's unbelievable. Well, what a horrible stat to read when Jim just sat there and thanked us. And we love Jim. Yeah. But, but it's a testament to Jim. Wow. <laughs> you yeah, know, because what they did. <laughs> Jim was already retired yeah, by care. that time. Obviously, what anybody says, I will take four losing Super Bowl appearances in a row any day of the week over never being there in the nine years I was in the NFL. You know, and we read through a whole bunch of different things, interesting little sports nuggets about the, the time that we've been on the air. For example, the, the year that we came on the air, Shaquille O'Neal won the NBA's MVP. No center has won it since. Right. Now, there are some guys, Joel Embiid and others, uh, who might change that sometime soon. But I was actually thinking the other day, someone asked me, so I was thinking about it, if we were to make a list of the greatest athletes that we covered, that we talked about during our time, the greatest players, to take the word athlete out of it, because that sometimes um, you know, right. can, can prejudice it to in different ways that we don't mean it to be. Just the greatest players of our time. We've seen many of the greatest players of all time. Who right? would you? Who before you, will you start listing them? Who would you say in our time was the most dominant athlete? It, it this I mean, Serena Williams is the most dominant athlete. No, right. no one dominated their respective sport more than she did. Tiger Woods Tiger for a Woods. period of time yep. did also. Yep. Roger Federer, we we we, we encompass the entire Federer mm-hmm. era. LeBron James certainly didn't dominate his sport the way those. Uh, did in individual sports, but I think he's going to go down as one of the two or three greatest players of all time. Well, he is in one over the full time of our show, a guy like Peyton Manning, who basically we wouldn't talk to him. The, and Brady, though, time. but Brady, yeah. I mean, but Brady came into the league the year right. that we started. we started. The second year of mm-hmm. our show was the year that he came on the field in week two right. and wound up winning the Super Bowl, and he is the greatest quarterback of all time, in my opinion. So we've seen... And we'd had the opportunity to comment upon many of the greatest, I mean, the genuine greats of all time, which has been great. And we came a little bit after Jordan, a little bit after Gretzky, a little bit after some of that era. But we have seen many of the absolute greatest. Yeah, we really have. And it's really kind of muted me talking about my career because of that. Well, but it never stopped me from doing it. I mean, uh, I, I've no, said, you know, I, I... Well, no, no, no. There's talking about my career, and then there's mocking my career. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to use these up for the last time. You're just standing on the line of scrimmage. I mean, Golick yeah. had three career interceptions. Yes, I did. 
And he was tackled by the quarterback all three times. All great athletes. That that might be my favorite statistic in pro football reference. It's, it's one of the great stats of all time. They all had the angle. You were tackled by, by Don Majikowski? Yes, I was. He had the angle on me. You were tackled by Troy Aikman? He definitely had the angle on me. And you were tackled by Jim Everett? That wasn't my greatest. Who I, I think once got into a fight with Jim Rome. I yeah. mean, that's how tough he was. So, I mean, you know, these yeah. are great stats, yeah. and I, I may never get the chance to use them again. Uh, you forget about the part about me actually making the interception, though, don't you? Conveniently. Yeah. The great Bill Curry mm-hmm. joins us one last time. Next. Don't miss it. Hey, girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips, too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.